Hey guys, welcome back. It's Chris Bircher. This is Knowledge Plus Experience Equals Wisdom. I believe this is episode 103. And I'm going to pick up where I left off last time talking about the acid tests, looking at whether or not we can use DNA as a proxy measure of the value of nature to inform us uh, about where we are, how we're doing, uh, what's the, you know, how are humans doing? on the planet, where are we going, where have we been, and are we doing a good job, or are there things that we could do better? Where I left off was talking about the hundreds of thousands of years of Homo sapiens existence and the idea of about uh, whether or not we are uh, doing a good job, or what did we know in the past, and you know, first of all, we have zero capacity to think about that time scale. Or, or spatial scale, we're terrible. And I did an episode about time and space where I make the argument that people suck at thinking beyond the scope with the space-time continuum. You know, you have to consider space and time outside of our sort of a generational lifespans. You know, maybe 100 years, 200 years, and we learn history. You know, we might go back to ancient Egypt, which is a good almost 5,000 years. But do we really have any? Can you picture in your head 5,000 of anything? Can you think of anything in a day that you do 5,000 of? You know, 100, maybe 50, sure. I can do 20 push-ups. You know, th- these are the numbers that that make sense in our brains. And unfortunately, when we get past 100, it gets just completely nonsensical. We literally lack the capacity to think about those kind of numbers. Or what we do, no, we don't lack the capacity, but we suck at it. And what we do is we sort of impose and go, yeah, I know how many 20 is, so a thousand is probably about like this. And it doesn't work. You know, a, a thousand is a, t- a lot. And we're talking about hundreds of thousands of years. And if you're talking about three to four, maybe five generations in a hundred years, you know, you're talking about thirty to fifty thousand, is that right? Um, generations. You're great, great. You can't even you can't even sit here and rattle off great enough times to figure out how what grandmother that would be of yours. Me too, and I'm not saying I'm any better. What I'm saying is I'm willing to admit it. Let's put some 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 barriers uh, on our um, capacity to talk about such things and just sort of admit that if our species, if you believe the carbon dating analyses of fossils that we found of bones we think are homo sapiens, there's a lot of assumptions there. But I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it for right now because we got no better information. I'm not saying it's the truth or that there's proof but let's just, for right now, the thing I'm thinking is we're 200,000 years old. Uh-uh. Can't do it. Cannot. You cannot hindcast, forecast, project the things that we do. We can't go, well, my life's been like this. And 500 years ago, you know, we didn't have running water and we pooped on ourselves. And so the, no, we don't have, no. And we really don't know what was going on back then. What we, all we can really say is, well, two things. One, it looks like we may have been around a long time. Two, things were probably different then. We didn't have iPhones. You know, we painted in caves, uh, whatever. So we suck at that. <laughs> but, and then the second, oh, this is, this is something. And this is what, what I was getting at in the last episode to a certain degree about dogma among disciplines and how people who identify with their career or their job start to become dogmatic, whether they like it or not. And this limits, one, they become indoctrinated in how they think and what they think, and they put these blinders on about their focus when really they should be doing the opposite and taking a holistic system approach to whatever question they're asking. But that's hard, and it's not a you know, good path toward a job <laughs> or publications or whatever, or credibility. Uh, so there's, there's that, there's all these, these efforts being made to, you know, become the job rather than to, to, to sort of, and I use the word purely loosely, but to sort of uninhibitedly t- take these holistic approaches to asking questions. So what we end up doing 
is assuming that we are better, right? And this is the big mistake, right? We assume that evolution is like a, you know, whatever the shape of the curve is, it's increasing on, and where if the, the Y axis is sort of good or, you know, increasing betterness, we assume that humans are getting better and that whatever we can do now in the context of thinking about our species for 200,000 years is better than it was then. And, the real culprit, I think, here, and I see this a lot in the writing platform that I use, Medium, and just sort of throughout journalistic, uh, um, you know, articles that I read in the news or whatever, is that <clears throat> we are arrogant about technology and technology as related to science. So we think that our invention of and uh, prowess with science and progress has created a world that is infinitely better than it ever has been. And you see this all the time, like, oh, would you want to live 200 years ago where we didn't know that poop killed us and you'd get cholera and die? It's like, no, yeah, I'm not I'm not saying there aren't good things that came out of our technological advances, but I will say two things that you might not like. Uh, and certainly people who are strict technologists are not going to like. You know, a lot of people say technology is going to solve our problems. I will say right away that it will not. We're not going to tech our way out of climate change. We're not going to tech our way out of uh, whatever is driving you know, increased depression, anxiety, and suicide. We're not going to tech our way out of those things. We're not going to AI our way into a world that's better, right? And this whole idea of better and worse, like that we've gotten better in twenty in the in the 21st century than we were in the third century, whatever. It depends on how you measure it. You're assuming a definition of better. You're assuming measures of success that may not be true. And these measures, these qualities that make life better or worse, get at this ta- idea that I talk about and we'll talk more about of the global value system. And part of my question about whether we can use nature to inform these things is, does nature imply a global value system for humans? An example of this would be like, do chimpanzees know they're assholes? If you're an asshole chimpanzee, you know, you're equivalent of like a nine-year-old kid. Is there a way in that culture that's, I don't know, three, four hundred thousand years old, whatever, in that group, is there a way to assess whether or not you're an asshole? You're damn right there's a way. They don't even have language and yet, you, I'm, I'm, I'm very confident that there is some measure to identify that particular individual as an asshole and then figure out a way to deal with it so that he's not. All right? And that's sort of the model, the idea that I use when I say, you know, we, do we have that now? What happened to Trump? What? What happened to any dictator or, you know, murderous leader, right? We don't, do we still have those things? Do we get better at that? No. So depending on how you look at things and how you measure these global values, your, your values, that's going to change whether or not you think we've become more or less successful through time. I'm going to argue that, sure, we've made some leaps. We've made some technological advances. We can get to the moon. Is that important? We have an iPhone. Is that important? We can, you know, cure HIV, AIDS, or um, polio, right? Those are, 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 and arguably, we can treat our waste. Problem is, for all of those solutions that we will not argue uh, are good, there's been an energetic waste and cost. You know, as far as fossil fuels burned, human lives lost, whatever. There's a, there was a cost. And it isn't like we went in the lab, we did a quick test, and we came out with a solution to the problem, and then everybody was better. No, there's a there's a there's an aftermath that we're not considering in the equation. We're not looking at. So that we can't really weigh whether or not the solution is better than the problem. Many things, I think, on the surface, we're not going to fight about. Being able to make sure we have cleaner water, you know, and cleaner air than we used to. Those are good and they're technological advances. On the flip side of that, we don't know what we've lost. We don't know how much better we were at doing things like regulating the asshole chimp. We don't know how better we were about natural resource management. 
We don't know how better we were at having a spiritual connection to a planet that did not lead to things like anxiety and depression and suicide. I will go out on a limb and say, I can't imagine life being driven by a giant suck factor for hundreds of thousands of years without natural selection imposing a solution. When the global value system was more or less, you know, present or being followed, right? The simple approach, you know, use, use only enough. Um, I, 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 I can't even begin to, and that's part of this whole stream of podcast episodes. We'll, we'll get more toward what did that look like? What could possibly look like? The only point I'm trying to make now is we do a lot of things good as humans, but we also do a lot of things bad. Some of the things that we do bad, we might have done very well in the past. And so it's not a matter of changing in as much as it's a, 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 a practice of remembering and focusing in on what we may have sacrificed as trade-offs for these technological advancements. A great example of this is climate change, of course, where we discovered at some point that we could burn fossil fuels. Now we could get the work done of 500 persons in a year instead of hiring one person to do it. Massive increase in manufacturing and food and whatever and solved a lot of problems probably along the way. What we didn't see along the way is there's a term, you know, there's a waste term, an inefficiency term in those models. It wasn't just oil plus guns equals a shit ton more guns. Maybe that's a negative example. Or oil plus food equals enough food for everybody to eat. It wasn't just that. It was oil plus food plus all of this environmental degradation, all of this energy lost, all of this foregone widgets and opportunity costs of something we else we could have done with that oil because it's limited, uh, and not really realizing what we were doing. All we were after was the end product that was solving this one problem. We, and, and, and in that equation, we lost sight of global values. We lost sight of the context. We lost sight of um, time and space. We lost time with sight of the interaction terms and, and the, is it important to be connected to each other and you know what is this causing? And then we're doing the same exact thing again with lithium and and other forms of, of energy. You know, if you forget that, A, there's not enough lithium on the planet that we know of to replace all of the gas burning vehicles with lithium batteries. So that's not going to work. We also forget that in order to get the lithium to the factories and to the cars and to build all that stuff, we still need natural resources. Anyway, we can credit ourselves with lots of amazing things. But in my mind, if we really sit down and look at the way that we did those things, and I'm not assigning any blame or judgment, but if you look at how we did the things that we've done that we think are good, we're simply not considering the system, the natural environment, the abiotic and biotic conditions surrounding that. Because we didn't want to, we're ignorant, I don't know, I'm not, again, no judgment, no blame, but it's, that's got to stop. And I think in the development of this idea, these acid tests, I think it's going to become more and more clear uh, about what we can do for the future or what we could have done in the past and maybe get us a little bit closer to those global values because I think it's going to be a recurring theme that we value the wrong things or we rank too highly the things that we value or we're looking at certain things that we value, money, health, maybe a good one, um, power status or bad ones, without putting them in the context of all the other things. And, I, and, and as, if we can invent an iPhone, if we can put people on the moon, if we can take high-resolution pictures of the galaxy millions of mile, light years away, we can do this. <laughs> you know, we can, we can take... All those terms that I talked about in my dissertation work, put it all out on the paper and get everybody involved and then go through them. What well, we can do, we, that's, not, that's not an impossible task. And I think in the process of looking at nature, 
seeing what we can learn about these bigger questions um, and running them through an acid test, we're going to get closer to those answers. And I hope you join me and I hope that you interact. I hope you send me an email. I hope you make a comment on my YouTube videos. Anything you're comfortable doing, I welcome it. I invite it. Even if it's to call me an idiot, it won't be the first time. I'm Chris Bircher. This has been Knowledge Plus Experience Equals Wisdom, episode 103, two, something like that. And I'll see you next time. Take it easy.